Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to show you how to make an organic shampoo that performs just like a professional shampoo but can be certified to Cosmos standards. Let me show you how. Now to formulate to Cosmos standards we need to follow strict compositional guidelines and the materials that I'm going to be using will help you achieve a professional quality shampoo product. Uh, but we do have special processing techniques we need to follow. The first thing is we are going to slurry our gum. Now I am using a really good grade of xanthan gum here so that we don't end up with a really clumpy or stringy product. This is Cosphoderm X Soft and it's going to help us achieve uh, a nice aesthetic look to the finished product. So I'm just slurrying this first and of course I'm needing to use organic glycerin to help with my compositional inputs. Now here I have already combined my water and my Planter Care 810 and I'm going to add my xanthan slurry to this because I need the xanthan gum to hydrate in all available water. This is a really, really important step. You must add in this order, otherwise you can end up with a gummy gel layer later, and that's obviously no good. So we need to add this first, and then we need to acidify the product, bring it below a pH of seven, so that we get the full gelling effect from the xanthan gum before we go any further. So first we have our gelled water plus partial surfactant phase. Next I'm going to add the anionic surfactant and this is where we're getting a lot of our cleansing performance. This is sulfur pond 1216 G. It is a coca sulfate but it is approved for use with Cosmos. Now I need to heat this gently to dissolve and I've added this after I've created my gel mix uh, because there is no water present now but I needed to achieve my viscosity before adding this anionic surfactant otherwise I'll just end up with a beaker full of foam. Now in a vat that's also not suitable, I'd end up with a vat full of foam so I'm adding in this specific order because of the materials I'm using. Now I only need to heat this gently until it's combined and of course in a large manufacturing vat I would be using sweeper blades to minimise air that gets introduced. Very important at this step we start to minimise air being introduced so that we don't end up with a product that is just all foam. Now when using different surfactants we might need to follow slightly different methods. In this particular case because of the precise combination of materials I'm using, the method is absolutely crucial with this product um, to follow it in the order that I'm adding materials so that you get the final product to be a nice homogenous mixture without excess foam, without a gummy gel layer, to be just the right viscosity for consumer use. We only need gentle heat here until it's all dissolved and mixed through homogeneously. You can already see we've started to form a beautiful gel form to this product. Now while we allow this to cool, we just need to solubilize our essential oils and vitamin E in with the super fatting agent. I've used Tego Soft PC31 because I find this really easy to incorporate into formulations, yet it solubilizes really well and it provides a really great skin feel to the product. Now if you use the sulfur pond on its own, you would notice that yes, it foams and cleans exceptionally well, but it also feels quite harsh on the skin on its own. And that's because it is a sulfate. So I also had a chelating agent in the starting water phase. So by adding a super fatting agent we don't impact the foam, we can add our essential oils 
in a nice solubilized form. So we end up with a beautiful end product. And of course, we provide conditioning benefits to improve that skin feel. So we've got great performance cleansing and foaming from the sulfur pond, but then we have the Tiga soft material, which helps impart a beautiful conditioning softness to the finished product. Now we do want to be careful not to introduce air at this step, but we do need to make sure we get a nice homogenous mix for the essential oils. And then I'm also going to add some cider vinegar. Now this is an active from Lipoid Cosmetic. And this is a great material because people know that apple cider vinegar is great for the hair, but this particular product also has other herbal extracts present. It's also got some great data to show efficacy in the finished product, so we know the product's gonna work well. They also have a rice vinegar product, which tells a great story if you're making products for Asian hair. And that too has some fantastic efficacy data. I'm also going to add my preservative and then give it a final mix through before checking and adjusting that final pH. Now we have our finished product. Now don't worry about the little bit of air you see on the day of manufacture. That will come out the next day and you'll have your beautiful end product. Now there's a couple of really important things you need to take note of when you're creating these products for yourself. One of the first things that's really important is to meet your compositional inputs. Now in this formula, I did that by using some organic hydrosols as part of the water phase. You can pick and choose your hydrosols and of course they do impart a lovely aroma to your finished product. Another really important step is to use a good quality grade of xanthan gum and that way you'll achieve a beautiful, aesthetically pleasing product that doesn't look too stringy or gum-like. You do rely on your gum to help thicken this product and you saw just how much viscosity it dropped when I added essential oils. Different essential oils will impact your finished product in different ways. So you may need to pick and choose different essential oil inputs until you get just the right combination that doesn't impact your viscosity too much. You'll also see that I reduced the pH after adding the xanthan gum so that it would gel properly. And this was so that it would gel with all available water so that the end product won't separate out into a jelly or gum layer. If I added it later in the process, I could end up with a lot of foam in my beaker or my vat. And then of course I wouldn't get a suitable end product either. So it was really important that I added it in the order I did and then brought that pH down to ensure it was fully hydrated before I added the anionic surfactant. You'll notice I used low shear only once I added the anionic surfactant and this was so that the product didn't foam too much and get trapped in that large amount of gum that I have present. Again, if I introduced a lot of air at this stage, I'd end up with a product where the air may not ever come out and that's no good either. You'll see I solubilized the essential oils and the antioxidant in the super fatting material. This is another really important step. We do need a super fatting material to improve the mildness of the anionic surfactant, but I've solubilized the essential oils and antioxidant, the lipid phase, in with that super fatting material so that it would enable me to solubilize the lipids properly so it doesn't challenge the stability of this formulation. I've included an extract that has a great product story and efficacy data so that I know my consumers would get the performance they're expecting from the product. It also has a great story that fits in with the target market. So make sure you use an active that gives a great story too and complies with Cosmos certification. Double check all of your inputs to make sure you've achieved your compositional limits. Otherwise, there's no point to creating the organic product if you can't achieve certification requirements. 
and of course check and adjust that final pH to make sure it's where it needs to be. As formulators we have so much choice with organic and natural materials now. We can really start to create aesthetically pleasing, professional performing personal care products and this is just one example of how I've combined permitted ingredients to tell a great story with a great performing product. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can leave any questions or comments below. Of course, you can contact us for a free copy of this formulation with all raw material and supplier details. It's too much to just put on the screen. And make sure you subscribe to stay notified of our next video releases. I'll be coming to you soon with an organic conditioner. Happy formulating.